Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about five REITs that I think are at high risk of cutting their dividend. So make sure to stick till the very end of this video. You don't want to miss any of these as a dividend cut could lead to some quite significant capital losses. But before I get into it, if you could please like this video, it will help me a lot. I just recently created this channel. Thank you very much. And so the first REIT I want to talk to you about is called Global Net Lease. Its ticker symbol is GNL. I think that it's likely to cut its dividend because its payout ratio is really high at 93%. And so this leaves very little room for error. And yet the company owns a lot of single tenant office buildings that I think are going to have some issues in the post COVID world. It still has a good amount of years left on its leases in most cases, but it has some expirations coming its way. And I think that uh, it's gonna have a hard time negotiating with tenants who are gonna be asking for some rent cuts or some very significant tenant improvements. And once you account for all of this, its payout ratio is probably already over 100%. Then you add to that that the company has a fair bit of leverage at uh, nearly a 50% LTV and the, the management is conflicted. Historically, this has been one of the worst management teams in the entire publicly listed REIT sector. They keep issuing more shares consistently despite issuing them at a discount to their net asset value. And as they keep issuing more shares, their share prices keep going down because they are, they are, these are dilutive equity races. And so this has caused the company to cut its dividend in the past. And I see them continuing to do this in the future, which will likely lead to more dividend cuts. And so the second REIT I want to talk to you about is called Necessity Retail REIT. Its sticker symbol is RTL. Uh, just like Global Net Least, this one is also poorly managed in my opinion. It has an external management structure which leads to lots of conflicts of interest. Uh, the company has quite a lot of leverage at 55% LTV. Its properties are, are not bad per se, but these are retail assets. We are potentially headed into a recession and you combine the recession with quite a lot of leverage and a high dividend payout ratio of 90% and I think a dividend cut is quite likely. Then the third REIT, this one is a bit more controversial. Many of you will disagree with me. It's Tanger Factory Outlet, ticker symbol SQT. Today, the company has a fairly low payout ratio at around 50%. It has a pretty good balance sheet. Uh, it's well managed. And so most people will probably uh, think that the dividend is safe. But um, what I think a lot of people are forgetting is that these are outlet centers. And these are very capex intensive properties. And when we talk about the, div the dividend payout ratio, typically we look at it based on FFO. This doesn't include the capex. And once you start including, adjusting for the capex, I think that the dividend payout today is already quite high. It's uh, not that far from 100%. It surely doesn't have much room for error. And I think that in the future, outlet centers are going to have to very heavily reinvest in their properties for them to remain desirable in the post COVID world. I've, um, I've posted a separate video on this topic, but in short, I think that outlet centers are the worst retail properties uh, in a day and age of uh, same day free shipping because they're typically located a bit outside of urban centers. So you have to drive them maybe half an hour. And, and so this puts them in a tough position in the post COVID world as people can can get similar type of deals at close by in stores like TJ Maxx, but they can also get similar type of deals online. And so once you adjust for the CapEx, I think that Tango is at high risk of a dividend cut, just like many of its other mall REIT peers have cut their dividend in the past. This includes CBL, Washington Prime, Pennsylvania REIT. Um, and I think that Tango might be next in line. Then the fourth REIT I want to talk to you about is called Office Properties Income Trust. Its ticker symbol is OPI. Once again, this is a REIT that has lots of conflicts of interest. It's externally managed. Uh, it has historically performed very poorly. It owns mainly single tenant office buildings, which as I've discussed previously, I think are going to suffer a lot of capex going forward as lease leases expire. And this REIT happens to have around 30% of its leases expiring in the two next years. Its dividend payout ratio may not seem high based on FFO as 60%, but again, once you adjust for the, the capex, I think that the payout ratio is way too high. If you look at its closest peer Orient office rate, it has a dividend payout ratio at around 22%. And it set it on purpose really low because it knows that it's gonna be hit with a lot of capex in the coming years. And so if they set it at 20%, 
and OPI has it at closer to 60%, that's the triple and I don't think that's sustainable. And finally, the fifth read, again, this one is a bit more controversial, many won't agree, and myself, I'm not so sure about this one. It's Omega Healthcare Investors, ticker symbol OHI. Again, this is a higher quality read, it has an investment grade rating, I like its management team, so, so nothing really to criticize on that front, but the issue that it's facing is that its dividend payout ratio is too high, it's around 90%. And uh, the company is now suffering some issues. It owns mainly skilled nursing properties. This sector was very heavily impacted by the pandemic and the high labor cost inflation in the healthcare sector. And so many of its tenants today are losing money. Their rent coverage ratios were very low already before the pandemic, and now they're even lower. They are right around 1.1 times. So there's very little room for error. Many of its tenants are actually losing money and they are not able to pay their rent today. And so just recently, uh, Omega issued a warning about its four, first quarter of the year and it, it said that its, its cash flow is going to be lower than, than it was in 2022 because of some tenants not being able to pay their rent. It also warned investors in their recent presentation that their dividend payout ratio is going to be a bit higher than usual in the near term. And so. I think that these are clear hints at a potential cut coming. Uh, the management, I think, is very reluctant to cut its dividend because they have a long track record that they don't want to ruin. But, you know, the, the dilemma that they are now facing is that today they have an investment grade rating by just above junk at triple B minus. But by not cutting their dividend, they might risk losing this investment grade rating. And so if they are faced with the situation of having to cut to preserve the credit trading or not cutting and losing it, I think that they are going to cut. And this is why I think that it's, the risk is quite high here. And so these are five REITs that I probably wouldn't buy if I was you. If you want to now next learn more about what REITs I'm buying at the moment, I'll put another video here on the screen that you can watch next. Again, if you could please like and subscribe will help me a lot. Please let me know also your thoughts in the comment section below. See you at my next video. Bye bye.